So in obviously our, our working with police and military over the years, um, you know, our emphasis has always been on empty hand defensive tactics. Um, but anytime we can use a full force multiplier, anytime we can help the people that we work with gain an advantage, then that's what we want to do. In, in dealing with, especially police and military, we always get asked about knives and what kind of knives and that kind of thing. And while there are tons of awesome knives out there, and, and for the most part what we're going to show, we'll work with any blade. We wanted a blade that really fit for the people that we were working with. So we came up with the HR1, which is designed for mostly carry on the inside of the waistband, um, but we've got some other carry options that are gonna be available soon. And, and the idea was I needed a knife that I could access quickly that would fit in with what I do empty hand. So I'm, I'm fighting with a knife as opposed to knife fighting. Um, and a big part of what we do is understanding that I need to be able to fight first and then if I can incorporate higher force into that, then that's what we do. As you can see, generally recommending an appendix type carry that allows me to access the, the, the blade with either hand, um, depending on circumstance. Though, if I've got a firearm, then the, we recommend generally it's gonna be on the lead side. Um, if I didn't have a firearm, then I would probably move it to my more dominant hand. Um, but it's how to fight with a knife. So we incorporate it into all of our self-defense training all of our weapon retention training, all of our clinch work, our wrestling, our ground fighting, everything, how to access this weapon under that kind of stress and, and then be able to transition from empty hand to knife to firearm and, and, and back as needed. Well, first of all, it has a fantastic sheath. <laughs> the sheath is really, really well made. But just by virtue of, of the way that it extends from the waistband and having the ring that's oval in shape. So for a lot of our guys that carry um, weapons, they also have to wear gloves for different environments. And being able to access this with a glove that becomes a little bit more cumbersome, this makes an allowance for that. And then having the, the nice big finger grooves that allow even better retention for grabbing, gripping, moving to a firearm, punching with the the knife, whatever it takes in a fight because fights are dynamic and things change and we needed a knife that would roll with those punches so um, that was the idea. Whether I, I ended up with the reverse grip or whether I ended up with more of a thrust grip, a punch grip, um, it needs to be able to fit in my hand and it needs to be able to be something that I can hit with in any direction and still hold on to it. Yep, for sure. And this is obviously the training knife. Right. Um, so it's aluminum. It's exactly the same size as the real blade. The production model will be blue anodized all the way around. It's lighter than the actual blade, but in terms of fit, feel, size, its ability to fit in the exact same sheath, it's all the same. Obviously before something like this goes to market, you would have had to do a lot of research. Um, you would have had to put it in a lot of people's hands yep. that they use it. What's been the, the overall consensus? Uh, the most common comment I hear is, I want one yesterday. Law enforcement, military, guys in, in my industry, even, even some of the, the, the people that I know that don't have any connection to this whatsoever, but they jog or you know they 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 go out and exercise in parks and things like that or or they just they're not comfortable carrying a firearm or they're not able to carry a firearm for whatever reason um, and being able to carry a, a, a blade like this that they can easily conceal and they can easily access they don't have to fumble around with a folder and that kind of thing um, the, the the response has just been tremendous kind of a, a across the board so i'm really really happy with it um, it's been a pretty cool experience to, to design a knife and, and go through the whole process. And because um, you're not a knife designer, no. I I looked at it like, well, because I'm not a knife designer, I didn't have any preconceived notions about what could or couldn't be done. So I approached it from a standpoint of of a fighter, not a knife guy. And from a fighting perspective, I knew what kind of a feel I needed. Um, I knew what kind of um, functionality that the guys that I worked with, the girls that I worked with needed. 
Um, and then I went to the, to the knife guys and I was like, okay, can we do this? Can we do this? Why can't we do that? Um, and sometimes, you know, they were like, no, that won't work. And sometimes they were like, man, that's a really good idea. Um, so I approached it from a, a fighting perspective as opposed to a knife perspective. Um, and I'm pretty happy with what we came up with. So is it a, is it a retention knife, a utility knife, something you can carry every day? Um, I mean, if you were to categorize what it primarily is. It's a fighting knife um, designed initially for helping me to re retain my gun, um, but it, it, it definitely is a single-use knife. This, this is a knife that I use as a tool. This is not a tool. Um, just like I wouldn't, I wouldn't use this like a hammer. I'm not going to use this for opening boxes and you know cutting string and things like that. I want this edge to always be as sharp as possible because if my life depends on it, I want to make sure that it's going to go through clothing and skin and muscle and bone and tendon. So this is a weapon, and I need to treat it like that. If it's an emergency situation and I need to use it to cut a seat belt or I need to use it, it's made from LMAX steel. It's, it's a, the super steel. So, I mean, you could use it to pry open doors and all those things in an emergency if I needed to. But I carry tools. This is a weapon. This is designed to save my ass if I needed to. Okay, so let's quick talk about just for us fighting with a knife kind of principles. Um, we call it the four Ps. Uh, purpose, power, penetration, precision, um, and, and necessarily in that order. Um, I'm going to borrow Brad for a second. Purpose is, is first because it's, it's mostly about my intent. If I'm going to use something like an edge weapon, um, it's a deadly force situation. So it's more about me just trying to inflict as much damage as possible in as short amount of time as possible, as quickly as possible. So intent, being aggressive, being committed to action. Um, power. We talk about it in our striking. We talk about it in our grappling. Everything is, is, is hard. So I'm not, you know, the, the line I use a lot is, I'm, I'm like a thousand coked up Mike Tysons. I'm not, it's, it, it's less surgery, it's more, I'm just striking and I'm going all the way through. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting, I'm, I'm punching, I'm stabbing in a way that I'm trying to take this knife and feel his spine. So there's follow through, just like there would be if I were punching, if I were here, I'm looking to hit a guy, or I'm looking to kick a guy, I'm gonna stab, I'm gonna slash the same way. I'm looking to go th through him with the knife. Um, penetration is kind of an extension of that. I wanna penetrate, I need to do damage, I need to cause massive hemorrhaging to, to force him to stop. I need to make him unwilling or unable to continue fighting. Unwilling is taking his heart, and maybe just slashing him in the face would do that. But I know to stop him, I need to cause massive damage. And that's gonna come through penetration. That's gonna come through me being able to, to isolate and find major arteries and get to them. And that's the last one, precision. Being able to find those points. Being able to hit the jugular, the subclavian, the femoral, the whatever. And, and do that kind of penetration and damage and reach those, those targets that are gonna cause him to shut down. So our four Ps, um, purpose, intent, be committed to action, um, really attempting to do damage, um, power, making sure that every strike, every slash, every stab is, is hard, powerful. Um, penetration, I'm trying to, to, to reach things that are going to matter. And then precision is last because at the, end of the, at the end of the day, we're talking about relatively small points and he's going to be moving around a lot. If I can get them, fantastic. But I'm just trying to, to do as much damage as I can in a short amount of time as I can to either access a different level of force or to get the hell out of there. If trying to isolate something that small and, and find these kind of points, um, it's, it's, I, I think you're much more likely to get a dude to quit just because 
of the psychology of it. You know, if, I, if I slash you in the face, if I stab you in the face, there's a huge psychological thing there. You know, if my, if my first, if I'm here and I draw and my first movement is that, even though there's no knife there, just, you know, that kind of reaction, that's enough to allow me to go to a different level of force then. I think um, getting caught up in, you know, isolating here, 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 whatever, it, it's, A, it's very difficult to do, and I just don't find it incredibly realistic. Yeah, so, you know, I, I think in, in a lot of uh, circles that, that deal with edge weapons, there's an uh, over-reliance on being precise um, in, in terms of trying to isolate sp very specific small targets. Um, and and from, from our perspective, it's more about being intentional, being committed, being powerful with the movements and trying to do as much damage as I can with every strike that I make. Um, fights are very dynamic and big strong people and aggressive people are moving all over the place and, and being able to isolate really small targets in that kind of a situation is really hard. Um, so I, I feel like there's a lot of time and energy and, and, and effort spent on, on being able to do something that in real life is really, really hard to do. He's going to be right. moving. Even, even, even here, if he's, not, if he's not moving at all, it's hard. just that is hard. Now, if he, right. if, if he starts moving around, he starts moving, we, we, we're, we're shadow boxing, whatever. Think about how incredible, if I'm just trying to touch, if I'm trying to get to like his subclavian artery, for example, which in, in terms of other targets is relatively easy. Think about how incredibly difficult that is to do. Look, I, I, just from jump, I have to get past that arm, and that's with him still standing there. So instead of focusing on, on that, I'm going to focus on attacking anything that I can get to. So if, if, if Brad's hands are up and we're fighting or whatever, then that's what I get. If that's what I get, boom, fine, and then I get that, and then I get that, and then I get that. I have no idea if I hit any of the targets that, that guys would tell you you should try to get. I don't care. I'm going to try to do as much damage as I can in as short a period of time as I can as we're going. Um, as opposed to thinking, okay, well, I, I have to hit him there, and I have to hit him there, and I have to hit him there, and I have to hit him there. It's, I, I don't find it incredibly realistic under extreme stress when the guy's really fighting me. Um, even if, you, look, look at boxing at a high level. Professional boxers, how many punches do they throw with a big glove on and miss? More than not. So to think that uh, I'm going to have better success isolating even smaller targets in, in an extremely violent situation just defies reality. I'm going to overwhelm him with aggressiveness. I'm going to overwhelm him with intent. It's not knife fighting. No, it's, I have a knife in my hand and I'm fighting him. If I put the knife down, if I, if I go here, the way that I would fight Brad here doesn't change. It's just now I have a knife. So psychologically it's probably going to change for him. Um, and the damage that I do is going to change probably. But it's not because I'm trying to be a knife fighter. I don't believe in that. I'm trying to fight with a knife. Um, I'm taking an extension of what I already do and making it more dangerous by having an edge in, in my hand. Very different philosophy. Extremely. I don't have time to devote to just this. I need to be able to fight however, wherever, whenever, with whatever. Um, and, and the idea that under extreme stress, I'm going to be able to hit those things. If I'm not just 24-7 dealing with that, is, is I, I just don't find it real. And I, I also question, you know, the true efficacy of being able to stop somebody with just attacking a certain artery or whatever. If, if you really look into the science behind that, and I have, um, it's going to take him longer to bleed out than what you think. So even if it takes him 15 seconds to bleed out, 
15 seconds is a long time if that dude's trying to cave my face in. And, and does it matter? Does it change if the guy has really big muscles? Does it change if the guy has really small muscles? Does it change if the guy's wearing a denim jacket? Right. Does it change if um, he's taller than you, shorter than you? There's so many variables that come into that. I'm, I'm pretty vascular. It's pretty easy to see and find arteries and things on me. Does that make a difference? What if the guy is, is obese? Is that going to matter? I have to go through all this fatty tissue. Is that going to matter? Or do I say, screw all that, and I just overwhelm him with aggressiveness, and I'm headbutting him, and I'm punching him, and I'm stabbing him, and I'm slashing him, and I'm doing everything that I can to survive the situation as opposed to relying on, okay, I need to be able to take this and hit him there, and that's going to end it. I just don't, I don't, I don't think that's the way things happen. Okay, so because we're talking more about fighting with a knife as opposed to knife fighting, um, we have a pretty big emphasis here on skill building, um, being able to, to draw under stress, being able to, to wrestle and strike and incorporate getting to your knife and using the, the knife um, just as an extension of fighting. So we'll look at a few drills that, that we use to kind of help with this. So Brad and I start, we're going to start kind of from a neutral grappling position, basically pummeling. Um, we end up in a clinch situation. This happens all the time in, in uh, violent encounters where maybe one guy's getting the better of the other guy from a punching standpoint, and one dude is like, okay, I don't like this, and know that I can't be hit nearly as hard if I'm here. Or one guy just may want to grab him. He may just be more inclined to get hands on that way. So being able to retain weapons from here and, and access weapons from here becomes important. Um, and just feeling kind of the, the inherent pushes and pulls and making space and filling space um, becomes important as well. Being able to move and change some angles and, and this kind of thing. So basic pummeling um, is, is a really poor, important kind of tactile sensitivity drill. And, and one drill that we'll, we can do um, to kind of up at a level is let's say I give Brad a knife and he puts it wherever he wants to put it, waistband, whatever. Um, we have an, uh, a timer that we use that gives random intervals. So it's not a set 30 seconds or 15 seconds or whatever. It may go in 8 seconds, it may go in 15 seconds, it may go in 30 seconds, whatever. And so we're pummeling and it's important that I understand where Brad's hands are. Because if I'm going to get stabbed, shot, choked, punched, tackled, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen with his hands. So if, if, if we're pummeling and we're just working, and maybe it's competitive, maybe not, we, we kind of progress it. Um, and at, at some random interval, that, that timer goes off. I need to feel where Brad's hand is. I know that it went from where I am to now somewhere around his waistband. So I'm, I'm starting to learn to understand how to, from a defensive standpoint, recognize that and deal with it. And he's starting to understand from an offensive standpoint how if that timer goes off and he's not exactly where he would like to be to draw his knife, but he really needs it, then he's still gonna have to figure out a way to access it in real time. So being able to slowly progress how to fight while accessing a knife or defending a knife becomes massively important. So just a basic pummeling drill can be made into something much more um, just by introduction of a, a knife from an offensive or a defensive perspective. And making it a little more random with a random timer is, is, is a good way to do it. Okay, so um, another drill, kind of an extension of the pummeling is um, a little more tax, tactile sensitivity, a little bit more difficult in that there's less sensitivity because we're, we're not as close anymore, um, but it's an arm drag. Uh, and, and again, just as Brad extends, I'm trying to feel and know where his hands are and trying to better my position. So if I make a basic drag, maybe I'm making a drag here just to get outside of Brad's elbows and put me in a better position. So if I go far side hip, for example, I'm in a better position than I was before. I'm outside of Brad's elbows. It's a lot easier for me to control the situation. It's a lot easier for me to know um, where, where my weapons are easily accessed and know where his hands are. So just kind of building some sensitivity in here where I know as he extends, I don't want to be there. And just like we did with the, the pummeling drill, can work in 
that random timer where if, if one of us is doing drags and one of us is armed or both of us are armed and just trying to get to our knife first off of that random timer. Um, so if I get to my knife first, Brad has to decide, does he deal with my knife? Does he deal with my knife and try to access his knife? Does he have to, to try to isolate me? Um, and it becomes much more real. Um, and we're, we're building real skills. And then as an extension of the drags, we can start looking to make the drag and start getting better control of the guy or girl that we're working with. Where now I've got a Russian arm or a Russian tie and I'm controlling Brad's shoulder, I'm controlling his wrist, I've got my head inside. And from this point, Maybe I could access my own knife. Maybe I look to put Brad to the floor. Maybe I, I, I continue to move outside and I go to my higher force with a firearm or whatever it's gonna be and continue to progress and build those drills that way off of really basic wrestling movements that almost inevitably will materialize in, in a stand-up grappling clinch kind of situation. Okay, so a little more skill building, um, some more drills. Big emphasis for us is hand fighting again because I, I know that if Brad's going to stab me, shoot me, choke me, punch me, tackle me, it's going to be with his hands. So being able to isolate hands as much as possible. So a drill that we do a lot is, is a basic hand fighting drill where for the most part we're going to go forehead to forehead. It's just safer so you don't knock heads. And the initial drill is Brad's trying to get a two on one wrist control, but I'm also trying to get a two on one wrist control. I'm not trying to keep Brad from getting a two-on-one wrist control. This is a very aggressive, offensive movement. I'm not playing to, to not lose, I'm playing to win. So if Brad gets a two-on-one, that's fine, I don't care. I keep working to get my own. So it becomes a little bit more dynamic and we move and we push and we pull and, and it's constantly live, dynamic, just trying to fight for wrist control here. So. Another way to kind of take this up another level is if Brad grabs his knife, his training blade, do the exact same thing, but now I'm trying to isolate two on one on the hand that has the knife. Brad's just trying to retain the knife. He's not trying to stab me or slap me or anything like that. He's just trying to keep this. He can switch knife hands. He can move just like he was moving before. He can try to get my wrist control, all of those things, but now I have to be a little bit more cognizant of what wrist I'm trying to control. So we do the same thing, and I'm trying as best I can to isolate the hand that has the knife. And you're gonna find out really fast how hard this is to do. And you're also gonna find out really fast why we spent time working on grip strength, because this is incredibly difficult. One more level, do the exact same thing, Brad has a knife, I have a knife. So we're doing the same thing. Obviously we're not gonna be able to isolate two on ones anymore, but we're trying to, to isolate the wrists that have the, the knife. I can still switch, but I have to understand that if I switch, I give up his control. And again, we're not trying to stab or slash right now. It's more about just understanding how incredibly hard this is to do and being able to manipulate in a way that allows me to retain my knife and try to control him. And now think about how hard doing something like that and trying to st stab these specific points becomes. So hand fighting, little progression, empty hand, one knife, empty hand, one knife, one knife. Okay, so still looking at skill building a little bit um, and, and sticking with the idea that we're fighting with a knife as opposed to knife fighting. Um, a big part of fighting is, is punching, striking. Um, so we'll show really a couple of basic ways of incorporating the knife into mitt work, um, but understand that this is a much broader topic. This is just giving you an idea of how to do it. Um, so if Brad, we'll start with kind of just some set combinations where I start to build some sensitivity. So if I feel Brad's extension here, and I'm pulling this elbow, and then I'm elbowing over the top, and as I follow up, I'm bringing the hammer fist back, and I'm making my draw. And there's my stab, and maybe I'm going here again, headbutting or whatever it is. I'm gonna incorporate as many strikes as possible into it. But at a base level, it's basic striking here. 
and just following through. So, so in the fight, I'm transitioning from close clinch work to my draw here. Another one we can do really quickly. Brad gives me, I don't know, one, two. I go to cover. So he's striking back. I'm covering off of that. As I'm covering, I'm striking again, striking again, striking again, and cold bringing the knife into my strikes. And it's all basic strikes, just using the knife in my hand. So I punch, Brad punches back. I'm covering, I'm countering. Bah, 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 bah. Here, incorporating the knife into it. So being able to fight and access the knife. So if we play a little bit more freely, Brad just gives me targets. <laughs> Knife in, same thing. So in that time, I just decided to make the cross grab, continue to work it in. So some basic mitt work, incorporating draws, striking, attacking with the blade. So this is dynamic. He's calling him out, and you have yeah. to, uh, to take that information in, respond, incorporate the knife. There's a lot of things going on here. Yeah. His cue that he's given me to draw is when he's putting the mitts there. OK. So if I see that. I know that's when I'm supposed to be deploying my, my blade and continuing to fight just with it in my hand. My choice on making the cross draw or same side draw, my choice on how long I continue to fight with the knife and when I decide to put it back and we start again. This right. isn't a perfect, like, you know? No, my, I want my training to closely replicate what fighting is going to be. I'm going to miss sometimes. Sometimes I'm going to miss a draw. Sometimes I'm going to miss a punch. Sometimes I'm going to miss a headbutt. Sometimes I'm going to think something is there that's not there. Or sometimes I'm going to think something's there and try to capitalize on it and it's not there anymore. Um, and me being able to, to roll with that. So if I miss something, it's not like I went, oh, damn, let's go again. No, I continued to move. I continued to strike. Sometimes I was even striking when Brad wasn't giving me targets just to indoctrinate myself. I need to recover off of that. So if Brad held something, I don't know, just hold something. If Brad held a one, two, for example, and I, I, I threw something out here like this, well, I'm going to continue to fight and move just so I don't go, damn, let's do that again. Right. Because I don't, I, I can't, I don't, I'm not afforded that luxury in a parking lot when a dude's trying to cave my face in. It's never going to look like it. The, you know this. Yep. We've shot how many videos together? Do, we, do I ever do takes? No. No. Do we ever reshoot anything? No. Why? Well, because you're not trying, it's not about you and being perfect and doing all that stuff. And yeah, you want to show the sincerity of training. Right. And you haven't reached your full form yet. And so mistakes are going to be made. Yep. That, that, that's training. That's right. right? If, if I'm not failing, I'm not training. So even, even when we're shooting a DVD, for example, it's not, I don't, I don't, I don't want to erase mistakes. I don't want to pull that stuff out. I don't, I don't want to put something out there that's not real. We shot 
what, three hours worth of DVD for a weapon defense and never did one take. Yep. That's, that's the way that it should be. That's, that's what's real. And I go through that and, you know, there's a little bit of stress there and my breathing starts getting heavy. I'm not trying to cover it up. I'm talking to you and my, my breathing is belabored and, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying, hey, Paulo, give me a minute and let, let's come back to it. If I'm not breathing hard, am I really training? Am I really giving maximum effort? No. So it's important for people to understand we're not cyborgs, you know. Um, I, I train a lot and I train at a high level with a lot of high level people. I'm still people. I'm still a person. I still screw it up. I still get tired um, because I push myself. Okay, so um, as you've seen from some of the drills, we're, there's a big emphasis from us on putting um, skill building over technique. Um, having a good understanding of energies and being able to develop overall fighting skills, whether it's, it's striking or clinch work or ground fighting or whatever, and then integrating the, the, the knife work into that as opposed to, okay, well, if he does this, I do this with the knife, or if he does this other thing, I do this other thing with the knife. Um, and, and just making fighting um, skills part of what the training is and then incorporating the knife as opposed to just collecting a, a, a host of techniques to try to memorize and that, that may not ever really materialize in a real fight. So what does that do for the student being taught that way? Yeah, um, I mean it's a little harder in, in that um, the onus is on me to make things work and to figure it out in real time. Um, it's easier just to memorize, you know, A to B. Um, but ultimately it makes the student, student more prepared and more able to, to survive a violent encounter. Um, I, average person maybe trains twice a week, so two hours a week. Um, so that means I've got an hour to get them um, ready to, to enhance their survivability. So in an hour I gotta get them warmed up, I gotta teach them maybe some combative, some self-defense, run some drills, that kind of thing. It's not a lot of time. Um, so as opposed to doing things like jumping jacks, for example, um, as part of my warm-up, I would prefer something that is, is fight functional as well. Instead of jumping jacks, maybe I have them pummel like this to where they're starting to build some tactile te sensitivity, they're starting to feel the pushes and the pulls and things like that, as opposed to this. Will this get them warmed up? Yeah. But so will that, and we're building a skill at the same time. If, if they need to work on more of their fitness, more of their strength training, then that's something that I absolutely encourage, but they need to do it on their own time. Um, I've got an hour to, to make them safer. So I'm, I'm, I'm maximizing that hour as best I can right. for, for students. Um, yes, we could have them jump, do jumping jacks, but that, a jumping jack's never gonna materialize in a, in a fight situation. Um, it will serve just as the warm-up or the fitness part of it, whereas with pummeling, I can accomplish both. Kind of continuing with the, the theme of the whole video in, in, in regards to knife and fighting and whatnot, um, just want to take, take you through some basic kind of self-defense, um, just to see how the knife can play into um, situations that, that aren't just take the knife, stab here, do this, do that. Um, if I find myself in a situation where maybe Brad is choking me, for example, or, or pinning me up against this, whatever this is. Um, here, all of the basic moves and movements that I may normally do from this position still come into play. I can make this defense, take my gun side away, transition to my knife here, here, and here. And then I can always go to higher force from this position if I wanted to, continue to move away from the wall, this kind of thing. Again, just understanding that we're fighting with a knife, not knife fighting. So whether it's a choke from the front or whether it's a, a body lock, grab, 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 grabs me around my body, this kind of thing. And I, I want to be able to retain my, my weapon, my, my firearm, and I want to be able to get my back off of this wall, and I want to be able to make space. So it's an easier transition to do that and then I can move and still maintain, retain the, the knife and go to higher force. This Don't stuff isn't throw... rehearsed, man. You're just, I'm, yeah, you I'm, can throw anything at you. I have no idea. I, I don't like, I have no idea what I'm going to do 
once he grabs me. I have no idea at what point I'm going to take the knife out, where I'm going to go with it. It's like we talked about in the other stuff, you know, I'm, I'm looking to do as much damage as I can as quickly as possible, make space, and now I should be running, or if I have higher force on me, I'm going to that, or whatever it is. So, so like if you had your chest against the wall and he was behind you, pressing you up, something so that like, I yeah. just kind of... So I'm right. like pinned up against yeah, the wall yeah. like this? Or even worse, like he's got his body on you, he's got his shoulder on you, you know? Like, yep. And he's like that, yep. you know? And he may be doing this, trying to grab something, trying to whatever. Same idea. Here I am. Right. So the idea of learning how to fight, developing skills. And, yeah, because and right there, not a technique I'm going to teach somebody. You know, the technique is, well, I found myself, hopefully I'm avoiding a situation like this, but just to have any understanding, even if I don't get to the knife, even if I don't have a knife, I have a basic understanding of, go ahead. Like if he's punching you. Yeah, like if he's, he's punching. Like go ahead. If he's punching, I need to cover. I have to cover this and I have to cover this because there's a wall. If I just, even if I cover this side and he just hits me hard, boom, my head's gonna hit the wall. Right. So I need to cover here and here. So as he's hitting, go ahead. So as he's hitting, but I am, I ultimately I have to turn and face him. I have to fight him. Right, and the amount of time that that happens obviously isn't real time because your, your weapons are exposed when your hands are up like that, right? That's right. It That's what people are gonna ask. It can't know? be, well, I'm just, yeah, because he may hit me one time and then try to grab right. for a weapon. Exactly. And obviously, you know, these are exposed right now. Where if 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 I'm carrying appendix here and here, I'm gonna be wearing something to cover these up. Right. But, but still, obviously, right. Um, if if it's a police officer, for example, right, and he's carrying it three o'clock, you know, and in in that case, it's gonna be exposed. Now, hopefully, he's got retention on the the holster and that kind of stuff. But um, same kind of deal. If I'm getting pummeled in here you know it's this kind of stuff is designed to, to help me weather the first one or two and then I have to be offensive I have to go to hitting him that's how you win fights defense you know I said it in the video the other day defense is for suckers if I just defend from here this is gonna be over quickly I need to turn the, the that kind of predator prey mentality that paradigm that needs to shift as, as, as quickly as possible or I'm gonna take a beating so let's talk about the knife design and how it facilitates that yeah uh, um, I've, I've felt that I've, it's easy to grab yep. the sheath is probably the best I've ever seen let's, yep. let's talk a little bit more about that yeah so and obviously this is the trainer and it's um it'll be blue anodized all the way through but it's got the finger grooves and it's got um, an oblong ring it's designed to be able to, to work with hands that are gloved um, I've got a nice punching edge here for it, um, Tanto style blade, um, which is great for stabbing, slashing, snap cuts, um, you know, I, I, any way that I would want to do damage to somebody with a knife. It's great too that uh, I noticed you had your index finger in there. It feels good even without it in there. Yeah, for you sure. Know, you, you... However I grab it, it's going to work. Um, and, and under stress, you know. That may be difficult to get, but this is no problem. Right. And 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 it's still relatively easy to retain because I've got the circle and the and the the hilt here. So um, working in fighting um, with a knife from whatever position I end up in, that's the goal ultimately. Okay, so just to illustrate a little bit more functionality with the knife and, and how it kind of works and especially in like a CQB situation where maybe I'm it's a home invasion and I'm having to move through my house or if I'm police or military and I'm having to clear a house um, my ability to to have the knife and have the firearm have the gun at the same time um, obviously we're out in here in the open but if I'm, I'm clearing a, a house and I, I try to cut a corner I'm trying to slice the pie or whatever guys there may grab on my gun I've got a knife, so my ability to, to retain here to here, I can make my stabs and my slashes, keep the knife, and, and transition right into the firearm. That was like two moves, very yeah. efficient. Yeah, man, it's, it, and that's what, that's again, you know, that's what we want. He makes that grab. I don't want to isolate uh, just my strength versus his strength, so I'm gonna take my whole body and work against the plane of his wrist here, boom. There. I can stab, I can stab. 
I want to make the, the firearm ready again and go. Um, so being able to, to, to use the knife with the gun, I can even, with this design, if I want, no problem. I can use the light still too. Doesn't compromise my, my ability to retain the knife at all. So I can move here, gun, knife, light. If retention becomes a, a real issue, if Brad makes a, a grab inside the holster here, then the same idea. Intuitively, people are gonna lock down on the holster and that's good. So I wanna lock down, I wanna be able to keep this. I would probably go to striking and there's my knife. I'm here, here. So using the, using the knife to fight and being able to transition between empty hand to knife to firearm and back again if needed. It, if, if I'm in a life or death situation and I need to cut my seatbelt off or you know I need to pry open a door, this blade is made from LMAX steel. The Tonto blade is really strong so you could do those things. But the truth is this blade should keep the best edge the whole time. I, I carry another knife for utility. Um, I, I want this edge to be at its best because at the end of the day it's designed to save my life and just like I wouldn't use this as a hammer I'm not going to use this to open boxes and things like that. I approached it just like we approach everything in our program, everything in our system. Um, you've got a problem, our goal is to come up with solutions uh, and, and I love that man. It, it, it's what keeps me going um, so the problem that we saw was people love the ring people love karambits but folders you know under stress it can be a pro become a problem and there's some great ones out there that you know and there are dudes that Doug is a great example of dudes that are great at, at deploying those things quickly um, but a lot of the guys I work with are just not comfortable with a folder under that kind of stress. Um, I mean, and then to military and law enforcement, they, they generally stray away from that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to the profile, the profile was important. I can still carry my. I can. You just saw. I can bring out the light. I can bring out the firearm, and it doesn't compromise my grip. It doesn't compromise the the knife. I can keep it the whole time, and and transition back and forth between all these things. So. Um, yeah, I, working with lots of law enforcement, military, and too, you know, I mean, I think it's a great knife if, if your wife goes out jogging in the park. You know, it's, it's, it's very slim, low profile, easy to conceal. It's not bulky or cumbersome, and it's very easy to, to deploy under stress um, from either side. So if, if I go non-dominant side, it's relatively easy to do. Again, even if I miss the ring, it's still easy and so easy to hold. If I end up making the cross grab from this position, it's still an easy, easy grip, easy deployment, easy punching. Um, and so I can move from here to here. But again, for the most part, we're going to carry appendix. Um, I want to talk about something. And something that you've taught me is congruency. Yep. Um, that systems don't win fights, individual techniques don't win fights. Yep. It's got to be congruent across the board. That's right. Tell me about this knife and congruency with your system. Yep. Um, it's, it's a huge concept for us. It's, a, it's one of our major principles. Um, you know, there, there may be something out there from Jiu Jitsu that I like better in one situation or from Kali that I like better in another situation. But if it doesn't fit with what we're, we're doing as a system, then it's very difficult for people to integrate that into the program with limited training time. So it was important for us to make sure that the knife fit that as well. Um, so being able to, to have a knife that just plugs in um, was important. So whether it's our wrestling or our, our clinch work or our grappling or our striking or whatever, it just needs to become an extension of those things. And I think we did a pretty good job of accomplishing that. Um, I, I can, no matter how I grab it, how I grip it, I can work it into striking, I can work it into to neck wrestling, I can work it into uh, mount escapes, whatever it is. It's, it, it becomes just one more weapon for me to have in my overall fight arsenal.
Right. It can be outward. It can be concealed. It, yeah. It can be a lot of things. Yeah. And, that, you, and, and you know, they will have more carry options because uh, we've had a couple of guys that, that want different carry options. But for me, this makes a ton of sense. It's easy for me to retain. It's easy for me to reach with either hand. It, 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 it's, it's here and go. You know, it's, I can go straight to whatever the problem is. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, concealing it is, you know, easy. No problem. Got to get past the holster there, but concealment's always a, a big thing for me. I don't, I don't, I generally don't carry weapons that aren't concealed. I, 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 I think that's a problem. I want it to be a for, force multiplier. I don't want people to know that I, I'm, I may have an edge on them. Unless you're on duty, that's a, that's, that's a, right. That's not what you're talking about. That's right. And and even then, if I'm on duty, I think there are ways that they can carry this knife that is not overtly obvious to a guy that's maybe trying to, to assault them and take them. You know, police officers have this kind of Batman utility belt of stuff that they have to worry about retaining. And a gun's just one part of that. You've got OC spray and you've got batons and you, you may have a, a knife and handcuffs and all this stuff that you have, taser, that you have to try to fight and keep at the same time. So having something that doesn't overtly scream, hey, there's one more weapon, I think is important. So that was kind of the idea. Look at problems, come up with solutions. I think we did it.